I've had some challenges in the last couple of years myself, uh, and uh, ultimately, I believe that suffering leads to salvation. Hey, it's a great video. I just wanted to add my two cents. From a psychology standpoint, he's basically saying that you have to let yourself go through the pain that you suffer so that you can overcome. Nobody really allows themselves to go through the pain because they think it's too hard for them. So in turn, they don't end up realizing that it's the suffering that actually helps your mind to learn and the pain you have to go through in order to There's learn. There's much deeper levels of learning that nobody realizes because they just don't allow themselves to go through the pain. When you would realize and put yourself in my shoes, I went through 20 years of familial abuse abuse by friends, abuse by neighbors, abuse by family, abuse by people, and abuse at the hands of anyone around me because literally my entire life has been spent around people who have been mentally ill, which has caused me to be mentally ill in turn. And you know what? I let myself be accosted by my depression for so long that I didn't stop it. I, I, I just let it happen. And I was also in a disassociated state, so I wasn't able to allow myself to stop. When in actuality, if I would have let myself deal from the pain from the very beginning, then I would have overcome my stress probably about 10 years earlier. And I would have even been able to speak up and help people. One of the major problems about this country is that we don't have any psychological outlines put in place that can teach people like me or people like my parents or people like their parents how to recognize psychological disorders and how to recognize when your child has reached their limit on stress. Everybody has this ability built into themselves. Everyone has the ability to get rid of their stressors, deal with their psychological ailments because it's built into you. You're made in such a way where you can deal with your own stuff. Psychology should be taught in every high school in America because this is stuff that people have to deal with on a daily basis and yet they think that math is more important than psychology. If you have major depressive disorder, for example, you should be forcing yourself into situations that are challenging to you because you have a problem with challenging yourself. Let's just say you're a psychopath. You should be trying to emulate other people's behavior. If you really want to conform to society, if you can't feel the emotions or the conscience that other people can, then emulate it. Eventually, it'll become like second nature, like riding a bicycle. If you suffer from borderline personality disorder, you should be structuring your life and adding a routine. If you suffer from depression, let yourself get more depressed. Lead yourself down the rabbit hole. Make sure you do that with a good support system, because if you don't have a good support system, you're not going to be controlled as you spiral down the rabbit hole. If you do that controlled, you can come out the other side completely victorious. If you suffer from narcissism, then constantly look for the search of truth. The same thing could be, say, for delusions, but you have to have a good support system that can put you back on track whenever you see the delusion. And if you suffer from OCD, I might I recommend some sort of a deprivation tank or like or at least retraining your brain to deprive yourself from stimulation. If you suffer from agoraphobia or a fear of people, then might I ask just keeping somebody around that you can trust, and then slowly building your ability to interact with people. Everything has to be done really slow, because not everything I say here is tailored to the individual person. It's more so generalized so that a larger people can interpret this for themselves. Jordan Peterson talks about these things, but I really don't see him on social media getting into details on how the individual person can do that. He saves it for his individual practice. That's really why this type of stuff should be taught to the general public and not save for individual sessions with a psychologist. And if you're not mentally ill, then you should learn to be a little bit more accepting of other people's struggles. I mean, come on, honestly. If you're walking up to somebody and saying something nasty about their own personal struggle, that means that you don't know how to empathize with other people. And that honestly could boil down to a form of sociopathy. In which case, you're going to need years of auto-behavioral therapy in order to get yourself past your own ego. And that's basically the whole lesson of this video, is that auto-behavioral therapy is the way to world peace. Controlling and killing your egos. Even right now, you're probably saying to yourself, well, I don't have an ego. That's ego. Ego is basically the inability to be humble. Not allowing yourself to be taught, or allowing yourself to learn truths that don't align with your everyday values. There are values that have been instilled by you through media influence and movie influence and family influence over a long period of time. It's about being able to learn other people's truths and understand them, even if you don't believe in them. It doesn't matter. You don't have to believe in anything, but you can understand them and you can learn them because it not only allows you to see other people's perspectives, but it also makes new friends. It also allows you to be able to, to grow and learn. Surpassing your own current circumstance allows you to move past your current state, allowing you to rise above anything that you have wrong with you.
if psychologists just basically help you see the truth for yourself, that means that you can do it on your own. Once you stop coddling yourself, that is. It's harder said than done to have confidence in yourself, but you have to. If you suffer from confidence issues, then I would recommend maybe just watching someone who's confident and emulating their behavior. Eventually, you'll start to believe it. Just in terms of understanding how long it's going to take, it took me about 10 years in order to perfectly perfect every situation of my major depressive disorder. I overcame it, I'm actually in remission now. And now, instantaneously, I can pinpoint everyone else's behavior and just understand exactly what's wrong with them from the get-go. And don't worry about it, there's nothing really wrong with you. Your brain is just doing this in response to stimuli that you suffered when you were younger, or maybe just recently. And you know what? Not everybody understands this kind of stuff. That's why we need some sort of a psychological outline, like I said earlier. We need something that we can keep with us every day that can remind us on a daily basis exactly what we'd have to do in order to stay healthy. And you know what? No one's going to do anything about this type of stuff except yourself. I'm not saying this is an opinion. I'm saying this is mostly fact, but generalized in order to fit a whole population. And you know, this comes full circle to the original idea of Jim Carrey. You have to be present in what you're suffering from, so that way you can learn from it. And just remember, you are a wonderful person, and you are loved by everyone. But they just don't know it yet, so don't take it personally.